My name is H.J. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. Please go ahead and share my latest article in the Daily Caller in the description section, free Julian Assange. And please go ahead, if you are interested in the Second Amendment, firearms, gun channels on YouTube, this one abides by YouTube policies, as most of them do. Um, and it's my new channel. It is a celebration of the Second Amendment, and it's just me enjoying, and I'll be hopefully interviewing people in the near future um, who are really knowledgeable about firearms and about the law and about a whole bunch of other things, and about the Second Amendment and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, um, advocates for the Second Amendment, gun rights advocates. I think it's very important. I think that the Second Amendment should be celebrated, not condemned when crazy people do crazy things. Nobody says, oh, well, you know what, this, this teenager happened to play a lot of vi very violent video games. Chelsea Handler, Alyssa Milano, all of these people also have armed security. That's one aspect or element of all of this that is overlooked. Um, I can go on forever. Share my segment, though. It is of me and a 500 Smith & Wesson 40 caliber handgun, 10.5 inch barrel. It's a beautiful firearm and uh, it's just awesome. That's already a couple thousand views and it's not even like a day yet. What, like five, six hours, seven hours? I think more than that, um, but it's already very popular. Check that out. Um, I'm shooting 20 rounds with it and it's a lot of fun. You can check out the weapon and um, how I try to control the recoil of it. Actually, it's so big and it's so well made that it, it soaks up a lot of the recoil, uh, especially the 10.5 inch barrel. If it's a shorter barrel, different story. Trump is not playing any more games. DOJ demand G DOJ confirms Inspector General will probe impropriety, political motivation of Obama spying on Trump. Just a, few after, uh, just a few hours after President Trump hereby demanded the DOJ investigate whether or not the FBI DOJ infiltrated or surveilled the Trump campaign for political purposes, Axios' Jonathan Swan reports that justice has confirmed the probe has begun. DOJ's uh, Sarah Isker Flores, quote, The department has asked the inspector general to, in to expand the ongoing review of the FISA application process to include determining whether there was any impropriety or political motivation in how the FBI conducted its counterintelligence investigation of persons suspected of involvement with the Russian agents who interfered in the 2016 presidential election. As always, the Inspector General will consult with the appropriate U.S. attorney if there is any evidence of potential criminal misconduct. The Deputy Attorney General issued the following statement. If anyone did infiltrate or surveil participants in a presidential campaign for inappropriate purposes, we need to know it, about it and take appropriate action. The liberal media is in full panic. Uh, Trump's most consequential interference in our system of justice. Give me a break. Since he fired the FBI director who was investigating him, no. the FBI, Comey wasn't investigating Trump. He was investigating the Steele dossier, which is nonsense. He was investigating Papadopoulos' drunken conversation with Downer, which is nonsense. He was investigating the DNC hack, which is nonsense. It was never... He wasn't investigating the hack, but which he should have been. But um, the whole thing is not... There's no evidence of anything. There it is. He has finally crossed the red line. Good. All these people are just so scared and frightened. Oh, John Brennan. This is John Brennan's voice. I will become John Brennan right now. Senator McConnell and Speaker Ryan, if Mr. Trump continues along this disastrous path, you will bear major responsibility for the harm done to our democracy. You would do a great disservice to our nation and Republican Party if you continue to enable Mr. Trump's self-serving actions. And then this is, you know, what he really wanted to say from his other tweet. Your, tweet, your cacatocracy will not be tolerated by upstanding individuals. You've tried to ruin this country, Trump. That's our job. That's John O. Brennan. John O. Criminal. O, his middle name, not his last name. No, no, no. This is like, you know, John O. Period. Brennan. Um, let's see. Profanity alert? Maybe later. Maybe later. I'm sure later. Um, 
Trump fights back. Trump fights back. He fights back. He doesn't take it. He doesn't get kicked in the face and then just says, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and play ball. Don't want to rock the boat. He fights back. People are like, oh, he's so boorish. He's so uncouth. Oh, look at him. These people are very polished, diplomatic, Washington, D.C. establishment types who are now caught with their pants down. And they're blaming everybody. They're blaming the guy who opened the door. They're blaming the TMZ photographer. They're blaming uh, the police officer who is taking them away with their pants down. After having been peed on by two prostitutes in the Trump dossier, they're, 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 they're blaming everybody. What's, what's really phenomenal is anyone who pays attention to this knows, even the people who defend Comey, they have to actually, the mental gymnastics are absolutely phenomenal. Well, of course, Susan Rice never unmasked names one week later. Susan Rice had every reason to unmask names because there was evidence that led her to, to unmask the names. What was the evidence? That's top secret. And then we find out it's not really... They, they were suspicious. There was no really evidence of any wrongdoing. Okay. Um, James Comey utilized the Steele dossier to get a FISA warrant. What? Are you crazy? No, there was evidence of collusion. The Steele dossier was just one part of the overall collage of evidence. Then we, Andrew McCabe says, yeah, without the Steele dossier, they would never have spied on Carter Page in Trump's campaign. Well, the Steele dossier has so many things that have been verified. And then BuzzFeed is suing the DNC because it's being sued for defamation by a whole bunch of very wealthy Russians. Did you think also the Russians weren't going to fight back? <laughs> this Russians are not like a, the type of people that are not going to fight back. They're going to, if, if you accuse them of something that they didn't do, they're like the Internet Research Agency, this Twitter uh, troll farm or social media, whatever they call it, a troll farm, but it's just probably just a, a, compu a computer company, whatever, social media company. Like the Democrats and Mueller were like, we're indicting them. <laughs> this is a long list of indictments. They love the word they hear, the, so the sound indictment. When really Hillary Clinton should have been, and she indicted, she committed crimes, and it was all swept under the rug. Um, if the if the Russian social media people committed crimes, why isn't Zuckerberg in jail? Zucker Facebook took their money, and then influenced the election on their platform. So the Russians are fighting back. Mueller is like, "We're indicting you!" Ha 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 ha! And then on the message boards of the retarded lame idiot liberals they're like ah oh, me lovey lovey me lovey muller oh it's muller time yay oh they're fighting back now they're, they they pleaded not guilty and they're like uh well this is the discovery process we want to know how we influenced the election how many people did we influence um what how what what are the what are the facebook ads you're referencing is it jesus arm wrestling satan is it buff bernie naked bernie coloring book how many, um, you know, shirtless Bernie coloring books influenced the election? Who bases their decision on Facebook ads? What kind of moron, aside from apparently Hillary, bases their decisions on Facebook ads? Social media is only important when there's an organic push for something. Not when it's like, you know, John Brennan. Do you think people would care if it's like a picture of John Brennan? And it's like, you click on it, it's like, protect this country from Trump's cacotocracy. And like, you've heard that a million times, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> if there's a meme that like, you can go ahead and click and it's like of John Brennan sitting behind his desk in, uh, you know, the CIA. And, I'm John Brennan. I'm going to protect you from Trump's cacotocracy, which happens to be a system of government led by the most unqualified people. Vote Clinton in 2016 on John Brennan. I lied under oath. I spied on the Senate. And Diane Feinstein, this is a profanity alert. Do not listen if you don't want to hear profanity. And Diane Feinstein told me to fuck myself. I'm John Brennan. Peace out, Cub Scout. Um, no, that wouldn't work. 
social media is influential when there's an organic <laughs> movement towards something. When Bernie Sanders, my articles went viral for a reason. It wasn't because of Facebook. It was because, not that I'm like, you know, Hemingway or Walter Cronkite or whatever, but at that moment in time, I wrote articles that went viral. One of my articles had over 750,000 Facebook likes. And I don't owe anything to Facebook for other people sharing the article. They wanted to share it. It's not like I wrote the article for people to share. You cannot write something hoping. They say it's clickbait, but it's not really clickbait. It's not clickbait at all. If you just provide people with a narrative that's contrary to MSNBC and CNN, they call it clickbait. But guess what? Also, if you source it, and I, uh, I had hyperlinks and everything, I back up everything I say. If I make a prediction that it's that is so obvious that in any other country it would happen, that yes, you know, tr uh, Bernie would win a fair primary. I would have been right about that had he not been cheated. Clinton would have been indicted because she actually committed crimes. But I was right about the biggest issue. Uh, Hillary Clinton losing to Trump. I was saying that, and people called that clickbait. They don't call, by the way, clickbait um, Bernie winning. Now it's like, you know, the establishment's okay with that concept now. So they're not going to write hit pieces on anyone, but they wrote hit pieces on me. So the, in the, good, the interesting thing about that is that they tried to knock me out in terms of a voice, but it didn't work. I'm not like a big, profound voice. I'm like a tiny voice in this political sphere, relatively small voice. But my voice is still being heard. They tried to knock me out. They tried to discredit me. Discredit me. It didn't work because eventually I was right. When I was saying from day one that Clinton will lose to Trump and on this channel, it's one of my first segments ever on this channel. You can go ahead and look at it if you enjoy this channel. You can also find my writing. In The Hill, I was a contributor to The Hill. But all of this is, you look at what they did to Trump. He's not, to most people, Trump is not a sympathetic figure. To most people, Trump is this brash, you know, belligerent, you know, bully. And he gets what he deserves. So throw everything at him. That is really stupid. Because then you make him a sympathetic figure to people who are just kind of independent or hate the Democratic Party. I love people who are like, well, I don't like Democrats. So they, they don't like Trump, but they hate Democrats. So then who are they voting for? They don't like Jill Stein. You find this also, like you find this a lot from like the, um, the anarchists. They're like, oh, you know, they'll call Jewish people Nazis. Like, you're a Nazi. I'm like, okay, well, you're voting for Trump? Yeah, well, you what, the alternative Clinton or a Democrat? I hate them both. Okay, who are you voting for? Jill Stein, Green Party? I hate her too. I hate Green Party. Oh yeah, I forgot you're an anarchist. You're, you're, you're tweeting me from a Starbucks or a coffee bean. You're an anarchist. You're a latte anarchist. But you're the moral authority. You're hiding behind names. It's not just the quote-unquote the hilarious anarchists. It's also the... And they're actually doing the dirty work for the liberal Democrats. The liberal 90s Democrats. And you know who they are. Like, for example, uh, not a problem. She's a wonderful, very renowned uh, lady who's accomplished a great deal. She's awesome. Her name is Joan Walsh. And she used to run Salon. And actually, she told Salon never to publish me again. So, And Salon reached out to me. And I have a great relationship, or I had a great relationship with their former editor there. Really wonderful guy. Um, but she just, you know, told Salon not to publish me. She tried to tell the Huffington Post not to publish me. She might have been, um, who knows, uh, regarding the Hill, who knows? But the point is they, wa they, they want to silence voices that they don't like, and then they lose. So the Democratic Party cheats, then tries to silence voices, but still loses. How does that work? How does that work? When I'm the voice and you're the voice saying, hey, you're running towards the cliff. And they're like, no, you're, you're evil. Hey, you're running towards the cliff. Please stop. You're evil. Shut up. Somebody punch him in the face. And then they fall off the cliff. They fly off gleefully. And they're like, we're falling off. Oh, no, there's dragon rocks. And yeah, I 
told you it's still your fault and they're like falling <laughs> the democratic party is like plunging to its political demise and they're still like pointing upwards are you you're it's your fault it's like i told you idiot crazy person crazy i told you you're now you're going to hit jagged rocks at a very high velocity stupid it's russia splat that's the democratic party for you so i mean this is a long-winded kind of i mean what can i tell you i already talk about the fact that dnc never gave its computer service to anyone in the u.s government the fbi is like can we please have a computer service this is a profanity alert if you do something wrong in this country if you if you even find like a dinosaur bone okay you try to hide that from the government you're but yeah, this is a profanity alert your ass is grass let's say that you have like this ranch and you'll find like a giant dinosaur like a t-rex bone like hey that's a t-rex bone i'm gonna go ahead and keep it for my generations no you're not oh no you're not let me go why am i doing this to myself and to you cut a long story short the doj is gonna um drop the hammer Worst case scenario, the inspector general is like, well, you know, there's a lot of really shady things, really horrible things. Best case scenario, they're like, criminal referral, criminal referral, criminal referral. And if that doesn't happen, you can rest assured Ron DeSantis and Jim Jordan and Matt Gates, the Republicans with um, a certain amount of testosterone level left. You can't rely on McConnell or Sessions. Since people have asked me to do Jeff Sessions, I'll try again. This is no offense to anybody from Alabama or the South or whatever. This is uh, Sessions responding to Trump today. I do believe that Mr. President has asked the Justice Department for uh, help in evaluating whether or not Hillary Clinton spied or President Obama spied on Trump's campaign and we're going to get that um, really nice Jewish boy Michael Horowitz uh, to go ahead and investigate that also he's already looking at the FISA warrants and you know I am Jeff Sessions you can't go ahead and expect me to work faster than I'm built to work. I need to just relax and sip on some iced tea and watch some paint dry and maybe some um, flies uh, on the wall moving about. What else? Maybe I can read War and Peace and then finally get to indicting some this is a profanity alert motherfuckers that's sessions he's just very very slow i could have done a better job but whatever dinosaur bones <laughs> uh if you found what am i wrong Find a dinosaur bone in your backyard. It's all yours. Oh, Lord. Now I'm, I went all through. If you find a dinosaur a fossil on private land, it's yours to do with as you please. I just got moated beyond belief. But the thing is, there was this huge case thing. In the United States, the fossilized... Oh, my God. Okay, well, you learn something new every day. In the United States, the fossilized remains of the mighty creatures that lived in eons past are subject to an age-old law, finders keepers? In America, if you find a dinosaur in your backyard, that is now your dinosaur. Hmm. That's interesting. This is fantastic. This is a Smithsonian. Okay, so basically what I wanted to say was if, if you engage in illegal activity, the FBI is on you, uh, and you are, you know, you are done for. They're going to go ahead and twist and have people um, testify against you, and if you lie, it's a big, big problem. But Okay...
Retired man found huge dinosaur bones while digging in his garden and stored it in his shed for 16 years before finally calling the museum. Okay, well, I was wrong. Look at that. But there was this case that I was thinking of. Okay, so there's something that maybe it wasn't dinosaur, maybe something else. Um, anyway, was it a meteor? <laughs> anyway, so I correct, I stand corrected. Okay, anyway, let's say that you were doing something that's obviously illegal. The FBI would, so when Hillary Clinton, getting back to my original point, which the dinosaur bones completely undermined for a second, but when Hillary Clinton, when she was like, I'm not giving my server up to anyone because it's about yoga emails and convenience. If anyone said that to the FBI, they would just bulldoze through the door, just like with Michael Cohen. And they would be like, it would be like, you know, dun, dun, da, da, da. Mueller, go! Debbie Wasserman, from the roof, down! Um, you know, Tom Perez, through the uh, window. But with Clinton, it was like, please, can we have your server? Comey was like, please, please. I'm queasy. Give me your server. And she was like, no, not giving you the server. I'm going to bleach bit. He was bleach bit with a cloth. That's also like when, could you imagine if Trump said with a cloth? They'd be like, with a cloth. Uh. It, the suspicion, there's no suspicion with Clinton. It's all like a high school. This is one giant high school that's about to, the cool kids are going to be expelled very soon. You know, this is an example where the cool kids are going to be expelled for just bringing alcohol to school and drinking in the locker room. And suddenly those kids are not going to be there. They're going to be expelled the next week. And all the Peter Strzok's of the world, Lisa Page, Bruce and Ellie, or all these people, James Comey, Andrew McCabe, the Inspector General report. I mean, it's like Sessions always like, and here's another thing, you know, when are we going to see this thing? Already, it's supposed to be June. Now, are they pushing it to July? It's not that difficult. We are, I can write the IG report. I'll tell you exactly what took place. Um, anyway, give me your thoughts below. The DOJ is now going to investigate Trump's demand for, so they didn't have to, he didn't even have to wait a day. A couple hours later, today, Sunday. Uh, it's on. This week is going to be a really interesting week. Definitely stay tuned. Uh, H.A. Goodman, uh, watch this channel and also my second, H.A. Goodman, Second Amendment. Definitely watch um, my segment with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, 10.5 inch barrel. It's awesome. It's a, just a really beautiful firearm and um, I'm enjoying myself safely and responsibly uh, and with full respect of the Second Amendment. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere.